Hi guys, um, this video is called Day in the Life of Anorexia and it's come from um, some comments that people have said to me over the last few weeks and um, I want to put this video up in line with Are You OK Day tomorrow. Um, just, you know, it's not um, against what anyone said to me because I truly believe that people don't understand um, mental illness or anorexia um, and I just want to point out just a few things um, because what you say and the way you say it can um, have really strong effects on some people without you knowing or without you meaning it um, so just um, for me some comments that people have made um, have been oh you you need to eat, girl, you're wasting away, you're getting too thin, or they'll make a comment to Dave and be like, oh, aren't you feeding her, or, um, you know, things like that. Um, and, look, I know that they're not meant to hurt me or um, anything like that. Um, but to me, what I hear is success, you know, people are noticing that I'm getting thin, so success goes off. Um, straight followed by disappointment and heartache and, you know, all of that that comes along with it. Um, so I just wanted to walk you through, I guess, what um, someone with anorexia goes through each day. Just because I believe there's a, there's a lot that... Um, people don't know um, because it's not a well-known um, mental illness and it's not um, widely talked about. And that's what I do these videos for um, because there's people out there that don't have the courage to put themselves in front of a camera and talk about it. And I want to be strong enough for that, those people that can't speak up um, and raise awareness for... Um, what we're going through um, as battlers and warriors against um, anorexia nervosa and depression because they're commonly um, together. So um, a typical day for me is waking up at 5.30 in the morning and walking the dogs. That sounds pretty normal to most people. The difference is if I don't get up and walk the dogs, then I immediately get the thoughts of your fat, you know, you're gaining weight, you're so lazy, how ridiculous, you should have walked the dogs, the dogs needed walking. That's what goes through my head. I've laid in bed some mornings and it's been pouring down rain and I'm like, oh, I can't walk the dogs today. And those thoughts start and I have to get up and walk those dogs. There's, there's no question in my mind, there's no you know, if, buts or maybes, I just have to do it because I can't stand the voices in my head. Excuse me if I get a bit emotional here. This is a really sensitive subject for me. Those voices get so loud that the only way to shut them up is to just do what they say. If you think of some person just insistently at you and at you and at you and at you, and the only thing you can do is just to shut them up, you do it. And that's what anorexia is like. It's, it's just nagging. It's constant. Um, so at the moment in my treatment plan, I have to eat every meal with someone present. So I can't eat if people are around. Um, that's not an anorexia thing. That's just um, a treatment thing so that they know that I'm eating. So Dave has to watch me eat, watch my portion control, watch my measuring of things. Um, if Dave can't do it, I have to Skype mum and do it. Um, and it's a, it's a burden on them. Like having to watch everything I eat and knowing, you know, what I have to eat when and everything because if they don't, I'm not going to eat. And that's, you know, that's really hard to admit, but it's true. If they don't watch me, I'm not going to eat. As much as I want to recover, I just I can't deal with the 
the voices because what happens is if it's not put in front of me or someone's not there watching me, I, I've had days where I've gone to the fridge, come sat down, gone, come back, gone, come back 10, 11 times because I'll go to the fridge and be like, yes, I'm eating, I'm, you know, I'm hungry, I'm eating. And then the voice will start, you can't eat, you'll be fat, you can't eat. So I'll go back and sit down and again I'll try. You know, and I'm back and forth. It's a battle every meal, every meal. There's not one meal that I have off. It's every meal that battle um, in between, between wanting to eat and not being allowed to eat. Um, and it's, it's hard. It's really hard. It's emotionally draining. It's physically draining. Today I am exhausted. Um, I haven't got up. At all, I haven't done anything at all today because I'm so exhausted. And that's what it is because it's getting up. It's not getting up each day and choosing to fight. It's choosing to fight every meal, every meal. And at the moment, I have three meals and one snack a day and it's a battle each meal. The other thing, you know, the people don't realise just the small things I'm sitting here with an electric blanket on me and it's a 29 degree day. I'm, I'm freezing. That's what happens. I'm freezing cold. I get freezing cold. There's nothing of me. I get so cold. I get exhausted easily. I um, can't do anything. Walking even a little bit exhausts me. Um... I get really dizzy when I stand up. I have to stand up really slowly because otherwise I get dizzy and I'm going to pass out because my blood pressure is so low. Um, you know, treatment is ridiculously expensive. Um, I, I spend like $250, sometimes $300 a week on treatment. So psychologists, dietitians, psychiatrists, um, and not a lot of that is covered by Medicare or um, private health insurance. There's not a whole heap. I'd be out of pocket about $200 a week just on treatment. Um, and, you know, it's, it's hard when I've had to give up working full time. The only thing saving me is my business. That's I'm lucky that it's booming and I'm able to you know, afford this stuff. Um, but there's people out there that can't afford it. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk about in this video is that weight gain's hard. I've had so many people, I'm, I'd be a millionaire if I had a dollar for every person that said to me, you need to just eat. If it was as easy as just eating, I wouldn't be sick. You guys have no idea how much I want to eat. <laughs> like that comment actually really hurts me, um, insanely so. And it's, you know, some people that are really close to me say it. Um, and I guess that's why I'm doing this video. Um, because... You know, if it was that easy, if it was just eating, I, I would not be in the position I'm in. Anorexia has not a whole lot to do with the food. Food is a coping mechanism to do with a lot, um, a lot of pain and trauma that I've got in my past, which I have a video planned um, in the coming week for that. Um, but I'm not going to go into it now, but it's a coping mechanism, a control mechanism. Um, when I feel out of control in my life, I've got to control the food. And, you know, it's... <laughs> I probably eat more than a lot of you at the moment, to be honest. You know, I eat three good-sized meals a day and one snack that's more than a lot of you because i've heard people talk about skipping lunches and not eating breakfasts and all of that um so i 
eat quite a bit of food and it's not low calorie food or anything like that it's just that weight gain can be hard when i've done so much damage to my metabolism and my body i've been on a weight gain plan for over two and a half months and i haven't gained any weight at all in fact in the last two three weeks i've lost a kilo I'm currently 200, 200 grams above my lowest weight. So I'm 42.2 kilos at the moment. Um, and I've been working so hard at eating more. You know, Dave and I go out for dinners and I eat. We go out for ice cream and I eat. Um, so it's not that I don't eat. So um, I guess before I start rambling on, I, th- I just want people to be aware of comments that they make to people, um, especially if you know they're struggling with something. You know, be really careful what you're saying. And if you, if you suspect that they're struggling with something or you think that they may be struggling, are you okay is all you need to say. You know, don't need to go into why they're struggling I haven't once told you guys why um, I have anorexia, if there is even one reason for it, because you don't need to know that because the fact is I have it. So all that needs to be asked is, are you okay? And that, that little sentence can mean so much to someone that is struggling. Um, so I guess what I want you guys to take away from this is, you know, be really careful what you say. Some comments are really insensitive, even if you don't mean them. And if you don't know what to say, if it's uncomfortable for you, if it's an uncomfortable subject, like if I was sitting in front of you now and i am got an electric blanket on, it's physically painful for me to sit here because... Everything is physically painful at the moment because I've got nothing of my body. I'm exhausted. Um, You know, my hair is falling out um, in places. My skin is, you know, my bones are sticking out, all of that. It would be confronting for you because it is for most people. And if you don't know what to say, are you okay, is what you say. There's no need to point out the obvious like I need to eat or say something to Dave about not feeding me or making a joke out of it. I know that it's just something people do when they're not comfortable and that's okay but be aware that it's not really needed. You don't need to make a comment of my condition. I'm not anorexia. Anorexia doesn't define me. There's more to me than anorexia. It's okay to talk to me about other things, you know. There's more in my life than this. Um, And for people battling depression, mental illness, anything, there's more to them than that. You know, we aren't labels. We're not. So ask us if we're okay. Ask us about our lives, our kids, our animals whatever's going on in our life, it's okay to leave the elephant in the room and ignore it. It's okay. So simply ask someone, are you okay tomorrow? And if they say they're okay, then they're okay for that moment. You can't force help upon someone. They need to want to get help. Um, Help's not going to work if they don't want to. Um... I didn't want to get help for a long time and it didn't help um, being forced into it. I had to want to get better. Um, And you just have to provide them with the knowledge that support is there when they need it. So are you okay? I'm here if you need me. That's all you need to say. Thanks.